Today I'm going to be teaching you some weird and wonderful Swedish phrases, so let's walk like a cat around hot porridge and get right into it. As you may or may not know, I've lived in Sweden now for around six months, so I thought it would be good to bring a bit of Swedish and a bit of the Swedish language into these videos. And also, I, I haven't really done anything this week. Apart from, I did go bouldering, which is like rock climbing, but torture for every part of your arms and, and hands and gives you calluses and makes you feel worthless and weak. So that was fun. Apologies in advance if I can't pronounce these. I am, as you can maybe tell, English, British, uh, UK-ish, uh, non-EU-ish. <laughs> that was a br Brexit joke. But before that, I just need to teach you one Swedish word, which is hår klippning. Wanna guess what that means? Well, hår klippning means haircut. Does it look good? I always find when you first get your hair cut, it, it always looks weird, right, but you get used to it. The man didn't speak any uh, English, so I was quite happy with, with how it turned out. Anyway, Swedish phrases. So the first Swedish phrase is slang de i vegan. So in English, we would tell someone to take a hike, get out of here, leave, right? In Swedish, they tell people to throw themselves against a wall. I mean, I think it literally does it, it says throw themselves in the wall. I guess uh, <laughs> it seems too violent, right? So I know take, gets, if you want someone to take a hike, you want them to leave, you want them to get out of here. I don't always want them to hurl themselves at some bricks. Maybe the Swedes have gone a bit too far on that one. I thought they were going to be quite pacifists, but maybe not. Okay, so the second phrase you've already heard, which is... Go some cat and gring het grut. So what that literally translates to is walks like the cat around hot porridge. So what walks around the cat like hot porridge means is the equivalent of the English beat around the bush. So to avoid the subject. I've just thought about, I presume comes from the days of hunting when you would beat the bushes to make the birds fly out. Um, and you, if you beat around the bush, then the birds wouldn't fly out for you to then shoot. So you would want to, if you want to get straight to the point, you would want to beat the bush. So I guess in Swedish they're saying to get to the point you need to be a cat and walk through hot porridge? I guess what they're saying is like the way a cat walks around the edge of something like you tipped her around the edge. I don't know. I mean languages are weird aren't they? Okay the next phrase is targa need which is when you're trying to tell someone to chill or calm down. In uh, Swedish it means to bring your spikes down which I presume is to be less, uh, I don't know, like guarded? I don't know, what? Bring your spikes down. Okay, so the next phrase is ingen kor på isen. Instead of saying no worries or I've got no issues or don't worry about it, they would say there's no cow on the ice. Which I guess if there was a cow on the ice, I'd be worried. So the fact that they are telling me there's no cow on the ice means I wouldn't be worried, I guess. Okay, the next one is Gia tilbaka for gammel ost, which is when, in English, we would seek revenge or we would try and get back at someone for something. The Swedes literally give back for old cheese. I guess what's happened here in this scenario is person A has given person B some old cheese. It smells, doesn't taste very nice. Maybe it's even blue. Who knows? Mouldy. And then person B is angry about it, and so they are going to seek revenge. And I guess that was the first time a Swede ever got angry at someone enough in order to seek revenge, and so that's where that came from. That, I mean, that must be the case. The next word is an SK word, which I don't know whether it starts sk or h or h. So I'm just going to go for what I think it should be, which is hogstakig. And this is if you're really, really angry or really, really mad. A Swede is forest crazy. So I think hög is forest, and then stokig must be crazy. I'd be crazy if I was in the forest, and I but I were a cow on the ice trying to walk around hot porridge. I mean, that would make me angry. Okay, the next one, interharient muerli porson. And what this means is not having clean flour in your bag, which is the equivalent of us having a skeleton in our closet. So, in the same way that you would want to have a secret that you would hide in your closet. 
a Swede would have a dirty bag of flour. So the next one is a bit too long for me to remember, so I'm going to have to read this, which is... Interselia skinnit fur and björnen er huten, I think. Which is our version of uh, don't count your chickens until they hatch, i.e. don't count on something before you know that it's true, you don't know they're all going to hatch into chickens. The Swedish version of that, and I guess it's to do with the climate uh, and the, the geography of the country, is um, don't sell the skin before the bear is shot. Do you think I should become someone who describes what sayings mean? And the last phrase that we're going to do is one that I've actually heard people use. Whether I've heard them use it or I've just heard them talk about it being a Swedish phrase that's different from ours, it's their version of our having two left thumbs, i.e. to be not very good with your hands. And it's har tummen mitt i handen. And it literally translates as having a thumb in the middle of your hand, which is quite nice. I guess if you did have a thumb in the middle of your hand, you'd be a pretty terrible handy man. You wouldn't be very good with your hands, right? So that is all of the Swedish phrases that I've got for today. I hope you, I mean, I'm pretty sure you'd have learnt something new. Even if you are Swedish and you know all of these, you'd have learnt a new way to say them at the very least. Again, apologies to anyone who can speak Swedish about my terrible pronunciation. Why don't you let me know what the weirdest phrase is in the language that you speak? It could be English, it could be Swedish, it could be absolutely anything. Let me know. And as always, if you liked this video and you would like to watch more, then click my circle face thing over here. Uh, that will let you subscribe so you can watch some more videos. And there is another video for you here that you can watch if you enjoyed this one, which I hope that you did. Have a lovely day, whatever you're doing. Viseus.